Today I'm going to show you guys how I make these fan heads. They have a couple different names, big heads, head cutouts, I just call them fan heads and they make great keepsakes and party favors. And there are a couple different ways that you can go about deleting the background off an image and cropping it so that it's only the head left. Uh, there's an app called Pixel Cut that I know you can download on iPhone. I don't know if it's available for Android also. But most of these apps and programs do require a subscription. I'm going to start with the Cricut Design Space first for those of you who want to go that route. And then I'm going to show you quickly how I do this on Photoshop. So let's search for our image and upload it to the Cricut Design Space. Ideally, we want an image that is high resolution and has a good contrast between the foreground and the background, but of course that's not always possible. Here you're going to click on Complex and Continue. And on this next screen here, the Cricut does give you the option to select the automatic background eraser so you can preview it on here and they do usually a pretty good job at erasing the background but in order to keep these results you do need to subscribe to the Cricut Access and I believe that's $9.99 a month so I'm not going to do that but for those of you who do decide to go that route once you subscribe and the background is cleared then you go down here to the eraser tool and you can erase the parts of the image that you're not going to use. And that's how you would go about doing this on the Cricut Design Space. Let me switch over to Photoshop real quick. The newer versions of Photoshop have this cool feature where you go up here to select and it gives you the option to select the subject and it's pretty good about selecting the subject for the most part unless you have a really messy picture or background that's going to make it hard for Photoshop to see the subject but in most cases it does just fine. So now you can see that the subject is selected and if we hit delete or backspace on here it would delete our selection meaning it would delete our subject just like this and we don't want that we want to delete everything except our subject so when we click on select subject we want to go ahead and hit Control shift i on the keyboard to invert our selection and then we can go ahead and hit that delete key from here go ahead and hit Control d on your keyboard to deselect the subject and here on the left hand side we're going to select the marquee tool and we're going to select whatever on the picture it is that we don't want and just delete our selection. Hit Control D again to deselect and go back to the tools panel on the left hand side again. And this time we're going to work with the eraser tool and erase whatever else we don't want, just like we did in the Cricut Design Space earlier. What I like about Photoshop is that you have so many different tools to work with, uh, the marquee tool, magic wand, eraser tool, etc. And so that really gives you the ability to be able to refine your end product and your design. For the eraser tool, I can adjust the hardness. This will soften my strokes and make it easier to smooth out some of those jagged edges. I'm going to add a black background layer to my canvas just so that I can get a better look and see if I need to erase anything else. Once you're done refining your image, get rid of any extra layers like this black background layer. The last step is to go up here to the crop tool and crop your image down the way you want it. Hit enter to save your changes. And then go up to file up here and select save as and choose PNG as your file format so that you can save this with the transparent background the way it is now. 
Working with long curly hair can be a little tricky when it comes to erasing the background. This image is ideal because there's a good contrast between the foreground and the background. So if I just go and select the magic wand tool, I can click anywhere on the background that I want it to erase and just hit delete. And that will give me a pretty clean image to work with. We can go in and refine it. And again, save the file in PNG format and upload it to Cricut Design Space. As far as the size of your cutout, it's going to vary because the Cricut Print and Cut feature has a size limit of 6 and 3 quarters by 9 and a quarter. So if either one of your dimensions, your width or your height, exceeds one of those size limits, it's not going to let you cut. Before resizing an image, we always want to make sure that we lock the proportions first so that we don't distort the image. And I'm going to change the width to 6 and 3 quarters. There's quite a bit of size difference between these two images and that's because this head here on the left hand side with the graduation cap is wider on the top because of the cap so that takes up most of its size. So that's why I say that the size of your head cutout is really going to vary depending on the shape of the image you're working with. I'll be printing using my Phaser 7800 DN printer. And I'm printing on this white linen cardstock. It's heavyweight, 100 pound cardstock that I found on Amazon. And as usual, I will leave all the products and materials used in this tutorial down below in the description for you guys. This cardstock does have a texture to it and I think it gives it a nice finish. This particular cardstock is really heavy, so be sure to look at your printer's specifications to see what's the heaviest cardstock it'll take before you purchase. Right now I have my Cricut dial set to cut poster board. I'll be gluing my cutouts to these 8 inch wooden fan handles that I bought on Amazon and I'll leave the link down below for that as well. That's it for this video guys. I hope you found this helpful. Let me know down below if you have any questions or comments and like and subscribe for future content.